Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with leopard trim, joining us all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. He weighed in at the bantamweight limit of 118 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 18 wins, no losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the IBO bantamweight champion, ranked the IBF number one contender, introducing the undefeated Silence African Spice Mabusa. across the ring on my left the defending IBF world champion fighting out of the red corner wearing red trunks with black trim hailing from Mexico City Distrito Federal Mexico he weighed in the same as his opponent 118 pounds even his record stands at 34 wins three losses with 30 big wins coming by way of knockout tonight ladies and gentlemen he is making the sixth defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting IBF bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Rafael Marquez. Once again, Norm Biden is our referee in charge. Now give instructions. All right, gentlemen, this is for the IBF and IBO world bantamweight title. You received your instructions in the dressing room. What's up, Baba? Anything below here will be considered low. Anything below here is considered low. Touch him up, good luck. Remember, protect yourself at all times. Out of 55 combined fights for Marquez and Mavuza, 48 have ended in knockout. Marquez known to fall behind and come back with his power. He can turn it with one big punch. And uh, for unbeaten Silas Mabuza, 15 of his 18 wins by KO, but he is also very quick, and he has blazing hand speed. This one, with all the elements of a, of a crowd pleaser, a no-nonsense champion, Rafael Marquez in the red with the black trim, and a flashy challenger, Silas Mabuza in the, in the leopard trunks. Both guys not known as fast starters. Marquez, one of those... Powerful little guys, very strong, terrific puncher, big right, but watch out for the left hook. That can do a lot of uh, damage. He's a risk taker, and like so many power punchers, will also taste some leather. Mabuza, a complete package, power, speed, chin hard, all the attributes you look for in a winner. Also, as an added bonus, Al, he can switch to southpaw. Yeah, and uh, should he do that, it might be a big issue for him because Marquez has done very well against Hot Plus, Kim Austin, Mark Johnson, uh, and he, Marquez said to us very simply, if he switches to softball, I will knock him out. That remains to be seen. Already in this fight, Marquez has landed a very nice uppercut, and that is a potentially big weapon against Mabusa. Marquez was a 5-1 to one underdog when he came from behind a knockout previously unbeaten Tim Austin to lift the title also rallied to knock out two sharp Johnson as Al pointed out both lefties but two very polished fighters in there as for last month's postponement by Marquez it did not sit well with the Mabuza camp a very expensive ordeal they had to fly from Reno back to South Africa and then back here to Tahoe first there was speculation Marquez injured his hand and the flu which just raised out for Mabuza's people. You know, this first part of the fight, very important for Silence Mabuza, the biggest stage he's ever been on, as we pointed out. And while Marquez is thought of as a, uh, not the quickest starter, he's been really sharp so far. 30 of Marquez's 34 wins by knockout. By and large, considered the best at 118 pounds. Marquez in the red with the black trim. He told us he's targeting WBA champ Vladimir Sidorenko. And after that, move up to 122, where the most recognizable name is WBC champ Oscar Larios. But right now, he's got a handful in front of him in South African, Silence Mabuza. You know, already in this first round, Marquez has used his left a lot, both as a hook and an uppercut. Mabuza trying very hard to counter with his own right hand. So he's Mabuza, who's a sharp, oh, big hook. Walked 
coming. Down for the first time in his career, pro or amateur, and that includes 475 amateur fights. Well, the left hook, I thought that was the punch that would get him, and boy, it already has, and he's in trouble. Fortunately, he's got only five seconds to go in the opening round. Can he make it? Yes, he does. For his sake, it came towards the end of the round, but he stumbles to the corner. He's standing too, much, can hit. He's standing too much in front of him. He's gonna come out smoking, you know? You okay, man? Yeah, I'm okay. Run, sir. Run, sir. In and out. Hey, Tara. I'm gonna start moving a bit. I don't wanna mix with him yet. Okay, start moving around. Well, a bit. the left hook from Marquez, a punch we suspected would be an important one, was right off the get go. There's the hook. It is a beautiful, short, compact left hook that got Mabusa. He's lucky he wasn't hit with that right hand as he was going down. And part of the reason he was hit is that he did not work angles. Now he's up and big issues. Now the right hand for Marquez, which of course is traditionally a good weapon for him, pushes him against the ropes. Tough round, down. needless Let's to go. say, for Mabuza. And here we go, round two. And Seconds Mabuza down. doesn't look very anxious to continue. A crushing two. left hook. Mabuza really blinking. And let's see if he can recover. Mabuza being tested for the very first time in his career. In his 19th fight, he's 18-0 coming in and goes down from a left hook late in the first. You know, it's astonishing, 475 amateur fights at 18 pro. Never down. And the power of Marquez at Bantamweight is really extraordinary. And what's amazing about it is, we know the right hand is powerful, but look at him throw the, the way he threw that compact short left hook. So. And interestingly, Marquez not known as a torrid starter. Mabusa must move and give angles to Marquez if he's going to survive in this fight. He cannot stand in front of him, and that's what he's done. That's what Nick Durant told him he couldn't do. So now we'll uh, examine the recuperative power. Here's a low blow with a left hook by Marquez. And another good left hand by Marquez that got through the guard of Mabusa. Keep him up. So it is all Rafael Marquez who is brimming with confidence here in round two. But back comes Mabuza with a swift combination upstairs. Then a left by Marquez. So some good give and take here. Well, the left hand of Marquez, when he doubles with the left hook, Marquez can land it almost any time he wants. That's the big chink in Mabuza's armor, Steve. And he has not, he just... He hasn't improved during this fight in blocking that punch. So we have some early drama here in Lake Tahoe. The good news for Mabuza, at least he's firing back. Now, when he's at his best, he has great hand speed with combinations, but he just hasn't been able to get any of those going in this fight. He's been on the defensive for the most part. So Marquez getting off to the, the fast start, but he's one of those guys who is not in a hurry. He picks his spots. He's being patient. And he's waiting for another moment. He didn't come right out in the second and jump all over Mabuza. Some guys might have done that. Twenty of Marquez's 30 KOs in three rounds or less. Fifteen within two rounds. Oh, nice sequence for Marquez. What a tremendous start to this fight. And, you know, Marquez himself admits he's usually not this great in the first couple of rounds. He's been spectacular. Training in high altitude. And Mexico has a good left hand by Mabuza. Another big left hand. Three in a row unanswered by Marquez. Terrific comeback towards the end of the second round by Mabuza. Closer to him. We go back to the first round where this left hand is going to get Mabusa. And the left hand of Marquez, as we see it, uh, has been a tremendous weapon. He jabs and then boom, there's the left hand. It's short, it's compact, and he's got Mabusa in a left hooking contest with him. But 
Silence Mabuza, we talked about his hand speed. And in the second round, he was able to unleash a little bit of those combinations. Working on the inside, throwing a right hand that followed those left hooks. The right hand is where he's supposed to be. Left hook combination is not what he wants to do, but Marquez, who has great power in that right hand, getting that punch in as well. Play down, play down. What is he just loading, Gris? Now let's see, as far as Mabuza is concerned, if he starts landing combinations to the body, that is an effective weapon for him from studying tapes. It really slows down opponents. Let's see if he goes to that uh, strategy. Even though Mabusa was able to come back toward the end of that round, see, the one thing that I think is still dangerous for him is the mostly the punch he was landing was the left hook. And if you exchange left hooks with Marquez, you're going to get hit with one of his. And I think the jab and a straight right hand, a much more effective weapon. He keeps going after the left hook. Mabusa staying in the conventional stance throughout. We haven't seen him switch to southpaw as of yet. The crowd chanting Marquez. Keep him up, keep him up. Round three scheduled for 12 for the IBF and IBO Bantamweight title. Now, you know, let's give Silence Mabuza some credit here because for a guy that's never, ever, ever tasted the canvas in all those fights, he has done a good job of keeping his wits about him and staying in this fight. Yeah, going down for the very first time in your career, pro or amateur, has to do something to you psychologically, I would think, but he seems to be shrugging it off nicely. What he's not doing, though, is giving enough angles to Marquez, standing primarily in front of him. When you do that with Rafael Marquez, you give him great opportunities to unload those power punches. Abuza always in great condition, and that could be a reason he has done so well here in coming back from the knockdown. He is just as effective late in fights than he is early. And let's see how far this one goes. To see if that is tested. Boy, he, Mabuza just walked into a left hand by Marquez. And so he was coming in, the, the impact double. We approach the final minute of round three. Mabuza in the leopard trunks. The challenger down late in the first from a left tuck. There's a nice right hand to the head by Mabuza. Now he is throwing straight punches and throwing them hard. I'll tell you the other thing. Rafael Marquez is landing more power punches, but Mabusa is shrugging them off a little better. And shrugging them off, that's an overstatement. He's getting through them is a better way to put it. Yeah, Marquez's shots are more powerful, but Mabusa is very accurate. He has pinpoint sharpness in his punches. These are heavy body shots by Marquez. That this is why in 30 he is regarded as the best bantamweight in the world. He's a smart fighter. He's not just a power puncher. We see all the skills that involved. There's a good lead right hand by Marquez. Marquez finishing the third strong. Wow. Trading toe to toe in the center of the ring. Hi, Silence. Just get an app. He doesn't like it. Go hide it. Just get an app, Silence. Take care, take care. Rafael Marquez continuing the good work. The lead right hand, the hook. Look at the combination. I missed mean, a three punch combination. Only the last one barely missed. It's such a misnomer to call him just a puncher because this is the kind of precision combination punching that's so effective. Almost the same combination. Seconds go. And that, those kind of punches are what created those two cuts uh, on Mabusa's uh, face. Yeah, so a new element enters the equation. A cut nice under the left nice eye of Mabusa and, loose, and around nice and the right eye of You're Mabusa. You're getting stronger, he's getting weaker. As we enter round four, Nick Durant the trainer and cut man for Silence Mabuza. Oh 
Silence Mabuza told us, or he was quoted as saying, this is going to be the best fight ever Stop. in the Bantamweight division. A strong statement, that but corner. it's starting out to be a pretty good one. Marquez, that corner. As the cut opens up, we'll hear the position. You all right, man? Yeah, I'm okay. Right? I'm okay. Coach, I'd like to see the Fekka's vision right now. Let's see what they can do in the corner. Okay. You ready? It's the cut Let's on go. the right side, Al, that is of more concern because that could affect the vision. The, the other cut is under the eye, under the left eye. So it's the one on the corner of the eye that could do damage. The one on the right eye. Nick Durant told us that uh, Mabusa is not a, quote, stand in the booth fighter, which is a very eloquent way of saying he won't stand right in front of you. Unfortunately, for the most part, that's what he's doing against Marquez. Marquez continues to connect, but Mabusa's game. Mabusa in a heap of trouble. He went down in the first, a 10 8 round there, and now he's got double cuts. Look what happens though when Mabusa gives him a little movement and throws the jab in a straight right hand. He can land that punch. So a sense of urgency now for Mabusa, who has to hurry up the attack in light of the circumstances. Let's go to Jim Gray for a report on the cut. Just talked to Dr. Stephen up, Brown. He says Mabuza has a cut above his right eye, not affecting him. A cut below his left eye, not affecting him. Quickly looked at it. Fight will continue. He will look at it again at the end of the round, Steve. Mabuza just turned to lefty. Marquez says if he does that, I'll knock him out. Let's see. I don't think it's a good move for Mabuza because Marquez is great against the lefty, but let's see. I think it's a show of desperation now by the South Stop. African. Warren Button again stops it to check the cuts. It's pretty big, Norman. All right, that's it. That's it. And it is over. So here in round four, it's over. If a fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth, it's a no decision. After the end of the fourth, they go to the cards. But if it's caused by a punch, the injured fighter can't continue. He loses by TKO. Well, and this was a, presumably a punch, so it's... Rafael Marquez celebrating. And he was brilliant in this fight. It's a shame this happened, though, because Salens Mabuza was was getting himself at least to the point where he was being mildly competitive in this fight, more than mildly in some fashion, and uh, bad breaks. And he suffers his first defeat in 19 professional fights. So Rafael Marquez silences Mabuza. And it ends the result of the cuts. Marquez retains his IBF Bantamweight title, adds the IBO, his sixth successful defense of the IBF belt, and raises his record to 35 and three, 31 knockouts, 14th consecutive win for a Marquez dating back to 2000. So a very impressive display by Rafael Marquez. Short and not so sweet for Silas Mabuza. Continue to uh, do work on those uh, cuts, the damage uh, done by the punches, we assume. The future for Marquez as he looked to unify or move up in weight to 122. He said if he won tonight, which he has done, his objective was to defend one more time, then move up to 122 and seek a title there. He's uh, targeting WBA champ Vladimir Sidorenko. So he continues to uh, show that he is the premier fighter in the 118-pound division. It was uh, a superb performance by Rafael Marquez. Interestingly, he said if he switches to lefty, I'll knock him out. We well, didn't knock him out, but right when he switched to lefty is when this fight ended up getting stopped. More of a coincidence because it 
stop the cut. Now he's still in the right-handed stance here, Mabusa, and, Mar and Marquez is being affected, but here's where he switches to lefty. And we mentioned uh, that Marquez has been so good. He won the title against Tim Austin, beat two former champ Mark Johnson twice. Look at how he rips those left hooks. And the bad thing about this posture is those left hooks could land for Marquez right on the injured eye. Now Mabusa working, but look at the left hooks landing by Marquez. He's still landing that punch, and it's affecting the eye of Mabusa. And right after this is when we see how bad the cut is and how the blood is around the right eye of Mabusa. So uh, Rafael Marquez doing everything right in this fight. Whether it was Mabusa as a righty or a lefty, he knew exactly what to do. And while he's not traditionally a quick starter, this was a blazing start for Rafael Marquez. There's no question that Rafael Marquez was in complete command from the from the opening bell he knocked him down with a beautiful left hook at the end of the first round and yes rafael marquez all smiles silence mabuza hearing it from the crowd as well let's get it up to our ring announcer jimmy lennon jr for the official situation ladies and gentlemen we have the time of two minutes eight seconds in round number four our referee in charge norm budden stops the contest upon advice of our ringside physician he is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the ibf bantamweight champion of the world rafael 